Why do the Dorbert principles replace the Fry test and what is their relevance to forensic psychology? After the Fry test emerged in the 1920s, it wasn't until nearly 70 years later that further recommendations were made in relation to the scientific acceptance and credibility of experts within the court setting. And the case that challenged the Fry test was in 1992 in the Dorbert v. Merrill Dow Pharmaceuticals Incorporated hearing. And this case related to a suit that was brought against Merrill Dow in California by the parents of Jason Dorbert and Eric Schuller, who were both born with birth defects. Now the suit alleged that the drug Benedictine, which was supplied by Merrill Dow and used to treat nausea during pregnancy, had in fact caused birth defects. So in response to the suit, Merrill Dow submitted that they had no case to answer for, and this was due to there being no scientific evidence or studies proving a link between Benedictine and birth defects. However, the lawyers acting on behalf of Dorbert and Schuller submitted their own evidence suggesting that Benedictine could cause birth defects. However, this evidence was provided by experts who had sought to make conclusions about the medications and the effects that it had on humans based on laboratory and animal studies without actually directly analyzing the impact of the drug on humans. So the experts critiqued the findings on Benedictine and they used their own unique approaches and practices to disputing the details and evidence provided by Merrill Dow. And this was far from generally accepted practice within the scientific community at the time. So due to the lack of acceptance of these scientific practices, the court ruled in favour of Merrill Dow. However, Dorbert and Schuller were unhappy with the outcome of the case and then took this to appeal. However, unfortunately the appeal turned out to be unsuccessful. But during the appeal, a review of the Fry test relating to the acceptability of evidence was undertaken. And although the experts had disputed the underpinnings of the studies relating to Benedictine and examined the effects of the medication on alternative species and populations, the techniques were not considered to be reliable scientific methods that could be scrutinized or verified. So in reaching the verdict, the court considered the rules of evidence that were established in 1975 and also the relevancy of the Fry test. And they provided specific recommendations to the admissibility of expert testimony. And this needed to be above and beyond things or evidence being generally accepted. So in this ruling, it was agreed that the judge acted as a gatekeeper for whether or not experts were suitable to testify and possessed the sufficient scientific knowledge within that area. It was also stipulated that the expert providing testimony must have expertise in the matter at hand and that the testimony must encompass methods and opinions that are reliable and relatable to the facts of the matter at hand. The ruling also specified that the knowledge and opinions of experts must be considered as scientific knowledge and derive from empiricism, whilst this knowledge must also be subject to falsification and in essence must be something that can be tested. So for admissibility, it must have a standard, it must be accepted through peer review and publication, and there also must be known error rates. So essentially the Dorbert principles or standards move from expert testimony and findings in court being somewhat of a pseudoscience to establishing guidelines for this to be required as essentially an evidence-based science.